everyone glorifying the Gusana Gas. We give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. Wonderful and blessed uh, Wednesday, Thursday, the 29th, the day that is considered the lead day. I welcome everyone to our official workshop and this will be an approximately approximately for two hours and the workshop will be a motivational workshop motivational business workshop and uh, some aspect of it will be expressed live on the instagram and we definitely have our audience here with us who would have officially registered for this workshop and will be joining us uh, live and those who are already coming in. And I do say blessed love to each and everyone, even at this hour. And what we will be doing as we go into the workshop, we will be actually sharing techniques and strategies to literally keep us as an individual, as a business owner, as a entrepreneur, as a manager, as an employee, as an employer, or whatever have you fully motivated. So I'm very thankful again to be with each and every Give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life as we go through. Now, again, my family, it's very important for us to understand that we are dealing with motivation. And this is why, even though we are going to cover many things, even just today alone, and let me show appreciation again for those who took the time to reach out and register for the uh, uh, workshop. In fact, your presentation, even though we have the good ones with us on Instagram, your presentation is still a bit different because those on Insta Instagram will not be able to see the direct PowerPoints that you will be getting. But again, we're dealing with the techniques we're dealing with the strategies and we are going into being motivated and staying motivated. Now, what I want to do here is to understand, let the ones understand that this is a very simple thing because we did a beautiful program yesterday with Brother Dave Bless the Pain. I don't know how many of you who listened to the Tiger's Nest got that previous night, we replayed it on the Tiger's Nest on radio and priestisaacinstitute.com. And we were speaking about wealth and the economy as it relates to Black history. Now, when you define wealth, <clears throat> wealth is defined as an abundance of valuable possessions or money. An abundance of valuable possessions or money. That's wealth. All right. Interesting. So what does abundance mean? An extremely plentiful or over-sufficient uh, 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 over, um, uh, quality or supply. No. This is serious as well, because abundance really comes from the word to abound. And then you have the economy, which is the state of a country or region in terms of production and supply of money. So you hear the term money a few times. So what is money? An item or medium of exchange that symbolizes perceived value. Now, when we look at these different definitions, so wealth and abundance of valuable possession, it says our money. 
Now, when something is about the planet that we live on, the environment that we are in, the world that we occupy, the whole universe itself is a universe of abundance. That's just reality. There's a thing that they refer to as the abundance ministry right now. I'm, I'm sure everyone uh, is in contact and can see what is taking place when it comes to that, that business there. That itself is a business, the abundance ministry itself. But, but listen to me, although I may differ with that uh, industry itself, especially on the theological level, there's nothing wrong with having a concept of, of abundance. Because again, wealth itself, number one, is an abundance of valuable possession. Now, the, the, the industry or the planet, the universe that we live on is a wealthy universe. There is no human being, there is no animal, there is no flower, no plant, no blade of grass that does not have enough. Everything that everything needs is right here. Nothing should be suffering. This is very important, you know. The creation was not created for anything at all to be impoverish. I want you to get that clear. So, and this is why, this is why as we get deeper, you will see why it's, it's so important for us to, to invest in ourselves as we move up the ladder of success and, and, and progress. So let us keep that in mind. So we must have that mind frame because to be motivated, it's about the mind, you know, it's how you think and and, 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 and what you perceive in and where you expect to go and how you look at yourself and if you know your purpose and if you know why you're here and all of that because if if you don't know well, if you don't know you just don't know when you don't know you you lean up against the wall and if you don't know you 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 pull your beard all day long because you're not too sure but if you know you know that hey listen it's almost time because you know it's almost time if you know listen we're almost there this is not the time to give up because you know you understand, and you have to know, you have to uh, uh, gain knowledge, you have to invest in yourself, or else you will never keep motivated. So, so understanding well, and understanding that the environment around you has been created to, to supply you and everything else with all that it needs. So every animal, every tiger, every lion, there's enough antelopes and zebras and whatever for them to eat. The zebra has enough grass. He just got to be skillful from the lion. But he and she, they have enough grass to eat. You understand? The bird that goes on the zebra and picks the little stuff that's crawling under the zebra's fur. There's enough of that. For, for that bird to get. And whatever the little bug inside of the zebra's fur is eating, there's enough of whatever that is dealing with in the microbiotic world to sustain itself. There's enough oxygen. We're not running out of anything. And listen to this. Even though we live on a planet that has been seriously, um, uh, I would say, raped and robbed, you all know that. This is beyond so-called climate change and global warming. They've changed it from global warming to climate change. We're not dealing with the political phrases. We're dealing with the reality, the way that they have destroyed the forests and the, uh, the rivers and, and, and the, pollu the pollution that we see in the sea and the sky and, and even species gone missing. They call it extinct endangered species all of a sudden just because of the way mankind has dealt with the planet yet still there is still enough of everything for everything and everyone you know i'm telling you so i'm trying to show you that even with the corruption that may be around 
the understanding of life and creation is that there is enough. Not just enough. Not just enough. There is an abundance of everything for everyone. So when you have that mindset, abundance is an extremely plentiful or um, sufficient amount of something, you know. And then now you come down into the economy. Now the economy is the state of a country or, or, or a region in terms of product and supply of um, money. And then there is a second definition of economy where uh, it is careful management of available resources. So you, you should be making note of these points here. The economy now, as we know it, the way that it has been given to us, which is the economy, let's just say, of the country, wherever you live. It is the state of a country or region in terms of production and, and supply of money. And, and also as it relates to uh, uh, consumption of goods and services as well. And secondly, it is the careful management of available resources. This is the economy. Now you could take out money out of that and you're still speaking about the economy. That's very important there. Eh? You could take money out of the definition. Money is not necessarily the economy. Money now is a medium. Money is, is, is an item or medium of exchange that symbolizes the perceived value of what obviously is being exchanged. So yes, you have barter and trade. Most of us know of that when I give you one item for another item. So my bunch of bananas for your bag of apples or whatever the case is, because you think that your apple is worth my bananas. And I say, well, I agree with you. Well, we just exchange it and go on our merry way. All right. But then now we, we, we come to an agreement that we're going to use quarry shells. And we're going to use this as the medium of exchange. This is what people call money. And, and we brought some other people into it and they said, well, yeah, we agree too. So one quarry shell is about one apple. That sounds good to me. And two quarry shells is two apples. I, I get the point. Very good. And maybe one quarry shell is two bananas. That sounds good as well. And you move on from there. So now you have money. But yet still, without the money, without the medium in between of exchange, you still had an economy. You know, that is why in ancient Africa, that is why in ancient Kemet, you see the, the, the growth and, of a society in, in, uh, thousands of years. And we're talking about infrastructure. Uh, we're talking about infrastructure that has been, has been testing uh, you know, the ravages of time, again, for millennia, the pyramid, the great pyramid of, of Giza, 250,000, a thousand, yes, 50,000 blocks. No, what I'm talking about, two and a half million blocks. And we're talking about blocks that are weighing between 10 to 100 tons. And again, that's just the great pyramid. And you have three of these pyramids and you have the smaller pyramids. And then you have Hremaket, which is what they call the Great Sphinx. I'm trying to tell you a, a civilization, an empire going back at, at least 10,000 years. To be able to do that, they must have been a strong economy to even fuel the idea of building an empire and even putting down infrastructure of, of that accord that is still there up to today. Marvels the world. Just imagine how they would have appeared when they were originally built. But the point I'm making here is that the economy, the economy was strong. What is the economy? Again, the state of a country or region in terms of 
the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. Okay, good. Again, the mindset eh, is important to comprehend these things. Uh, uh, for those of us in the class, we uh, the, the definition of economy, you may not see all of it there on, on the writing, but let me read it for you again. Make the note from what I'm saying here. The state of the economy. The, the economy is the state of a country or region in terms of production and consumption of goods, and services and the supply of money. So now, invest in yourself. This is where it all begins. This is why we're dealing with the mindset. We are in a culture what I just explained to you a moment ago, this is why you're not even taught African history, because you're not supposed to know that. You're supposed to, you know, think small, think mediocre. This is just the reality. Why do you think we have been advocating for so long to get African history and heritage into the educational system and it is uh, brick walls? Because the educational system um, all over the place, even in Africa itself, has been designed, uh, post-colonial design, you know, have been designed to make sure those who have been so-called emancipated stay mentally enslaved, make sure that they totally forget who they are. I just explained to you, we're coming from a society where there was no word for poverty. No one was poor. Why? Because we understood how to utilize all the abundance that is around us. You, you get what I'm saying? We understood how to utilize all the abundance that is around us and create an economy. And what is the economy? the state of the country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services. And remember, wealth is an abundance of, 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 valuable, of valuable possessions, and that is all around us. So we understood how to be one with nature. Now you live in a slightly different world at the moment, and I just mentioned post. Uh, colonialism and post-enslavement after that period. So you have been left in a world now where you have to, as they would say, uh, pull yourself up uh, by your own bootstraps. So you, you need to have a specific mindset because the mindset that you have been given is that uh, how many of us, let me ask, even those on Instagram, and those who we have here online in the chat for the workshop, how many of us grew up in a household where the word of the day was abundance? Hmm? Well, the, the, the one says here, CB says here, we've been programmed to think that there's a limited amount of resources. So we tend to live in... Uh, really uh, 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 in a reality of lack, we need to reprogram our mind to the abundance, you understand? So so anyone, anyone, anyone grew up in a house where, I'm not saying it has, it's impossible. My, my children grew up in a house like that right now, but I grew up in a house where mm, we'd usually hear uh, we can't get we can't get that right now. How much is that? Okay, let's wait and see. All of these different things. Maybe that was the reality, but yet still, again, that's the mindset. You know, money can't buy you happiness. That's another thing. Money can't buy you happiness. Now, most people that say that never really had the money to see if it could really 
buy them happiness. You know, money don't grow on trees. You understand? Right now, the whole world is talking about medical marijuana. And they told us money couldn't grow on trees. And we see it growing on trees now. But we knew that all of the time, by the way. You don't have to worry about that. And, and then at the same time, you hear uh, a penny saved is a penny earned. Just the level, the mindset, the way of thinking that we have been um, given to think. And it is important to get out of that. We refer to it as the scarcity mindset. We refer to it as even the average mindset because you can come out of the scarcity mindset, you know, and somehow find yourself in the average mindset. And these are the different things that I want to even get into today. So when we speak about investing into yourself, I mean on all different levels. Now, some of us here today, we are professionals in different fields, whatever it may be, whether it's um, your professional teacher. Um, I know we have professional yoga instructors with us, uh, professional um, herbalists, uh, doctors, whatever you may be, whoever will see this in the future, professional engineers, you know, and then you have those who are entrepreneurs, those who are mm, upstarters, or, or those who are again different different aspects of life and different uh, levels of your career, wherever you may want to be. But the importance you have to invest in yourself, as simple as it sounds, eh? It sounds simple, you know. But again, the mindset. Many of us, we, we don't even really move through the day thinking that, hey, I need to find some time to invest in myself. I don't necessarily mean just to, to go with the programmed agenda. What's the programmed agenda? Uh, get a good edu educati education. See if you can get some good qualifications and get a good job. That's the programmed agenda. I think we all know that. Some of us, we, we get out of that, but we may not go too far away from that. That as well is a programmed agenda. So you really want to somewhat even go, may sound ridiculous, but go ridiculous in how you think as far as what you want to achieve. So this is why you have to really now begin to invest into yourself. Whatever field you're into, even if it's just a job, you need to study the field a bit more. If you, let's just say you work on a, 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 on a plantation where you plant uh, eggplants or, or whatever, and you are a laborer, as a laborer, even if you did not go to school to be the professor or to be the individual that only comes once a week to examine the plant, you should go home daily, every evening, after work, and study this plant that you are planting. In fact, forget the eggplant, egg cannabis. You understand the industry is growing internationally. There are many ones that are literally working in the, in, the, in the field, and they're just laborers. They may just br be bringing the pots. <laughs> they may be just, you know, potting the plants. But then at the same time, if they were serious, if they had the right mindset, if they were motivated after work, during work, during lunch, who are they having lunch with? I mean, you're working in an environment, maybe 30 or 40 of you. I'm sure many of you watch um, these videos on Canapids and some of the other channels where they go all over, um, not just the US, Canada, and different parts of the world where the cannabis industry is, is, is on another level as such. And you see that, you know, you have at least 50, 30 to 50 people on staff. And again, you have laborers. Maybe you have 20 that are just basic laborers. And then you have the professionals. You have the doctors. You have 
the degreed ones that are dealing only with cloning, those who are dealing with the mother plants, those who are dealing with harvesting, those who are dealing with curing and drying. I'm just using this as an example. So you now, as the individual who may be lower on the pyramid and maybe not making as much as those that are up the ladder, what you can do again, again, who are you having lunch with? Are you having lunch with the same people that are potting the plants with you? Or when, when the professor comes in, because you know the professor, maybe he comes in mm -hmm, three times a week just to inspect the plants. How are you today, um, Dr. Samuel? I'm okay, I'm Fred, you're looking good. Um, Sir, I, I was wondering if I could um, not only have a word with you, um, maybe tomorrow if you could just entertain me for about 15 minutes, I would like to have a word with you concerning the plants that I see you inspecting. I was doing some studying and I realized that there's a different strain that they're using over there in Thailand. I think we could do good if we invest into that. Uh, okay, um, I, I've heard of that strain. How did you know that? Well, I've been doing my studies and uh, I understand that this strain is a bit more potent than such and such. And then you just started going to the science because you've been studying the plants You've been studying the, the biochemistry of the plants at least for three months. So you understand the terms that maybe even I don't understand, although I'm just putting the analogy out of my head. And the professor will be impressed. He says, okay, um, all right, no problem. You can meet me for lunch and I will give you 15 minutes and we could discuss your proposal. I, I already sent you the email, by the way, sir. It's actually a proposal I literally put together, and I'm sure we can break it down so you have a, a chance to look at it before I come. Oh, so what you just did there as well, you literally now sent him the information even before you approached him. So he actually sees that you are very serious. He came in with his lab coat, you know, and you're there in your coverall with your gloves because you already potted out some plants. That's what you've come there to do but you're motivated. You have the mindset. You're not just going to sit around. You're not just going to do what they say to do. You want to go to another level. So wherever it is you're working, <laughs> you're working, let's just say you're working for an airline. I used to work for an airline. You understand? Um, yeah, just as a laborer, just coming out of college, carried aviation. And basically the same example that I would have given to you. I would have put on my overall and I would have just gone to work. Like, what, what am I now? 19, 20 years um, of age at that time. And um, so they were the same example I gave you a moment ago. You would have the chief welder. I can't remember his name, but he would come in maybe once a week when they need something to wear. And he would go and he would do what he do and that's it. And you could believe he's getting well paid for coming in on call because he's a quote unquote um, a professional. In fact, let me tell you this clearly, all the experts from the, the, the managers of the hangar, because I worked in the hangar, huh? I worked with the literal planes. There were small planes like uh, Pat Navier's and Queen Ears and those sort of planes. That's how I learned about those planes, you know? So those of us, again, who are basically the laborers who would go and put air in the tire when the plane lands or who would go and uh, work with the, the upper mechanics, those who were just a, a bit above us and help them to change the oil and change the spark plugs. And then now you had the supervisors now, and these were individuals of a different complexion than most of us. Some came uh, from Arabia, some came, uh, uh, one came from England, uh, um, uh, um, one from India, and the bigger boss and the owners were European. So that's the structure there. I'm just trying to show you what is going on. So I'm already, I already, already understand that situation. Now, at that time, I was coming into this fate that you see me as and you know me to be 
of Rastafari. I, I was already a conscious being. Um, as far as being motivated, as far as wealth and 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 what as it refers to generational wealth, because that is the goal. You know? The goal is generational wealth. The goal ain't a million dollars. Come on, come on, stop that. The goal is generational wealth. But but at least I I began to study to take the exam to get to a higher realms and get my degrees in um, um, engineering, et cetera, et cetera. I even bought the books, I actually started to study. I, I, um, there was a course, that, a course that I enrolled in as well, but that wasn't the calling. That was not the calling. And I just left that whole stuff there and went to the real calling. But the point I'm making is even then, even then, I already knew I cannot just be passing the talk rich to Tom. I can't be just passing the rag for error. No, I want to go in the cockpit. In fact, I actually learned how to start one of those part navias. In fact, I think I could still do that if I had to get into the plane today and fly it away. You understand? I would have gone on flights with the pilots just because, you know, of my enthusiasm. So even from that time, I personally would have um, navigated, um, obviously, when the plane would have already landed on the landing pad. International airport, big um, American airline planes, uh, a meal when the the um, the individual who is to bring it was to bring it in said um, to go and do it for, for him. You know, because I was there, I, 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 I always had that spirit to be up front. So that is why even that is why even when the boss told me that I could not work if I was growing a beard, I said, no, man, he's holding back my call. So I'm just showing you, I'm giving you a personal example of what it is to be in a field and to be motivated and to be ready to, 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 to go to a higher level. It, it's just that that was not my field. So obviously an individual will have to know their calling as well. So all of these things are important. That's why you need to know your purpose. That's why you need to know who you are. You may say, how do I know my purpose? How do I know, you know who I am? These are simple things. Now, this is why you have techniques. A simple thing like getting up before the sun. A simple thing like that. Because this is not a quick fix sort of thing. You know? This is something that will take time. Economic growth takes time. It takes knowledge. It takes information. It takes investing into yourself. Even just to be ready to approach uh, an investor even just to get ready to approach the marketplace, even just to get ready to approach a prospective client. It takes training. It takes confidence. It takes a level of obsession. You have to be even sold on whatever it is that you are selling. So this is why, again, it is important to invest in yourself. And, and it, when you invest in yourself, you start to understand your purpose. You, you realize who you really are and what you are here to do. So I am encouraging everyone, you should make note of this. Be sure that you um, 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 get up every day before the sun. You must rise up every day before the sun. The sun should not be shining through your window pane and you're still there on the pillow. Impossible. No. Now, what that does every day, every single day, and at least, I mean, at least an hour and a half before the sun to not, oh, I just got there. No, no, at least an hour and a half. And it's a whole process, you know, create a routine. Create a routine. And I'll tell you why this is important. You wake up, myself, I get up, take a shower. You understand, I'm not a fan of the coldest of showers, but believe me, I don't have a problem at all with the cold shower in the morning, even if it's cold, because that wakes you up. I'm telling you, no matter how much you want to go back into the bed and all of that stuff. 
And listen, man, everyone, everyone has an alarm clock. You know, you can't make no excuse. You see, procrastination, that's another thing that will hold us back forever. Excuse. This ain't no time to make no excuse. This is another thing. Write this down. You need to be hard on yourself. Write it down. This is especially those who are here in the workshop. Eh? Give thanks to everybody that um, is coming in. Right. Um, you need to be hard on yourself. Don't be hard on nobody. Don't be hard on the missus. Don't be hard on the, the king man. Don't be hard on the little ones. Even those who work for you. You can be a little firm on them, you know, firm. Be, be, be firm, you know. But be, be firm with yourself first. Check yourself first. Make sure you're hard on yourself. Look yourself in the mirror first and say, hey, we need to wake up at four o'clock. You need to stop this now. This five o'clock thing cannot work. Because when you wake up now, you get up at four. Don't go back in the bed. Just go straight to the shop. And when that water hits you, believe me, you're convinced that it's time to go. You know? And do you know, the earlier that you get, you, you wake up, it is the more your system um, has a chance to release itself of fecal matter. Yeah, yeah, this is the motivational workshop, business workshop we're talking here. Uh, I'm serious. So, so somehow this may not sound like business to many people because that's how we've been trained. That's our mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you. Being healthy is wealthy. Wealth and health is the same thing. So I'm showing you that the earlier you get up, because I'm sure everyone knows that you're supposed to release yourself several times a day, if, if you, especially if you're eating several times a day, and especially in the morning before the sun rises, when the sun comes up and you have not released yourself, it's a different thing, believe me. But the earlier, this is my personal experience here, the earlier that you, you wake up and you do that, I, I, you realize that sometimes you go two or three times. And that's obviously a good thing. You pass your waist. Go to the toilet for those who may not be getting exactly what I'm saying here. Very good. So again, convince yourself to do that. Again, be hard on yourself. Make sure that, hey, listen, man, set your alarm clock. Everyone has an alarm clock. If the phone don't work, get one of those real alarm clock that shake on the table and jump up and down. Make it wake you up. Put it, a put it away in the other corner of the room so you have to get out of the bed and go to it. I'm telling you, this is very important because when you begin the day early and you take that fresh put on your fresh clothes and 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 before you go into any sort of work you put aside at least 15 minutes for meditation and reflection now i personally give that much more than 15 minutes you know first of all i'm coming from a i'm coming from a, an order where where by 5.30, we're reading Psalms and, 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 and going into a whole service that goes like about two hours, you know? But I'm speaking now, yes, you know, on, on a one-way level there, I'm just showing you that when you, after cleansing yourself, you know, and you give yourself at least 15 minutes of meditation, and this can be done in different ways. Some of you, again, we have... Um, ones here that are yoga pra 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 practitioners so I don't even have to tell you what to do you know you could just naturally practice um, deep breathing you know um, that, that might be the time of where you may want to do some early morning reading but but I, I wouldn't I would not advise you do that right away honestly I would take at least 15 minutes for reflection, you know? So if you take an hour then for, I guess, getting into the day, take 15 for reflection and maybe the next 45 for whatever early morning reading that you want to do, because I, I understand that, you know? 
um, I, I take the morning also to do early morning training. Then you have the physical part of it. So all of this is very important. You'll notice now by the time other people are getting up, you would have already done so many things, even if it's just to clean around the house. Things that would not have gotten out of the way would get out of the way when you literally not only get up before the sun, but literally um, penetrate uh, and meditate. Let me just look at some of the, the comments I have here. Someone say they have a problem. Oh, okay, I understand that. Someone say we have, um, I, I think I read that earlier. This is, yes, the ancient theories that of the new earth is taking on. Uh, it's, it's abundance thinking, abundance, very good. All right, now, <clears throat> We need to have our set massive goals and also set big targets. Now, when we say massive goals, again, this is important as well. And the, 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 the reason why, one of the main reasons why, first of all, before we even go into it, and those who are here with us um, at the Precise X Institute of Holistic Knowledge online workshop. Blessed love to all those who would have taken the time to even register for this. And we say blessed love to all of those who would be joining us even on the Instagram. Now, obviously, when you have a target, this is, first of all, when you have a target, if you really want to hit this target, you cannot aim at the target. That's first of all. So this is just common sense, first of all. Because sometimes when you say you need to have big goals, I hear people whisper, well, you know, you know, the Bible says you just be sufficient is enough. And, um, you know, you don't <laughs> tell me. <laughs> As I said, eh, the mindset, how we think. Well, even if it's sufficient you want, you can't aim for sufficient. This is my point. And anyone that has a child should be thinking about generational wealth because that's the next generation, even if it's one child you have. Well, you should be thinking about generational wealth. So, so I mean, come on. How many of us who should be thinking about generational wealth are not thinking about generational wealth. Most of us, we're just thinking about what we're going to eat tonight and how we're going to get through, how we're going to scrape through. Again, the mindset, financial freedom. You should write these terms down, you know, these should be a part of your lingua. You know, not like, boy, Boy, I am making out and uh, I'm going to try and I can't and how many, uh, what, that's expensive and all of that kind of stuff. No, the mindset, the mindset. So when you start to think big, when you start to set big goals, you're supposed to have a goal, eh? You're supposed to have a goal. And when I say a goal, we may say goals. You can have goals, but you should have an ultimate goal. Some, you see, the thing is, some people's goals may be uh, a, a figure, like maybe a million dollars. No? That's a, many people have that as their goal. No, man, that can't, that, that's not the type of goal you want. That's not the mindset that you want. We are on a planet of abound, abundance, you know. When you tell someone, have, a, have an abundant day, you know what abundant means? Abundant means more an excessive amount, much more than you need. This is what abundant means, you know, that you're supposed to have not what you need. You're supposed to have much more than you need. So if you talk in abundance and you don't understand that you're supposed to have like a hundred times at your disposal what you literally need to survive, well, you're mistaken. I'm not talking about capitalism. 
I just explained there's an abundance of everything for everybody and everything on the planet. And yes, there's a system that has been designed to keep most of the people on the planet away from the wealth of the planet. It's a system designed by, by crafty, wicked people. It's just a reality. We can't sit down and cry about that all day long. We have to find a way to get what's ours. What you say, family? Listen, if, if, you, if you can't, if you cannot thrive on your own as such, within your own nucleus, your family and your community, then how are we going to come together as a people, or as an international family to do greater works? We can't keep saying we're going to come together and pool our resources together and we don't have resources. The resources are there. There's a medium called money that is used for exchange, trade and barter. That's why we began the workshop like that. You know, but again, you have to be in the, the, the right mind frame eh, to achieve again this generational wealth that we are speaking of. Let me show you a little, that little secret. Let me just show you a little secret. Now, many ones that will put their full heart into trying to create generational wealth. They, they're going to really go fully at it. Because first of all, do you know what generational wealth looks like? Believe me, you know, leaving a business, even if it's a thriving business that may last a few generations, that is not generational wealth. No. No. It's a good little shot. In fact, many people admire that. But generational wealth, again, is like leaving an empire that is sure to carry on, you know, into the future for, I can't even give it a time because it's generational wealth. Don't tell me it cannot happen. People are doing it as I'm speaking to you. So again, the mindset, even before we get to the figures, because you have to get the figures to you. Know, we have to understand figures. Many of us, we don't understand figures. You know, $4 billion. Wow, that sound, man, what are you talking about? You don't even know what you're saying. $4 billion. $4 billion is, I mean, that is not even something to think about. Yeah, no, I'm very serious. I'm very serious. Um, when you think about, again, financial freedom, figures actually dissolve, you know. You start to think so big. You start to think industry and assets, everything comes on to a different level because you would have passed the figures <laughs> stage. Anyway, let us return to the goals. Eh? See, we're going very far here. Let us return to the goals now. So you must have at least a personal goal. That just appears like, wow, two grand. Let me show you. A goal to build your mother a house. That's a very genuine vibes. I mean, everyone should want to build their mother a house. In fact, not just your mother a house. I mean, that, that's, that's not the goal. No, that, that can't be the goal. That's a target. But that's not the goal. That's impossible. That's impossible. If your goal is to build your mother a house, like that's a goal. Remember, goal is something that you are achieving, trying to achieve it. A billionaire is not going to have a goal of building his mother a house, even if it's a million dollar house. It is someone who is trying to create the wealth and the income to build their mother a house that has the goal 
of building their mother a house. Maybe they have the money to build their mother a house, but they have other things to do with that same money that they have that could build their mother a house. So it's a goal for them. It's something they want to achieve because it's not readily available. You get me? That's why it's a goal because you're not there as yet. So if you're not there as yet, make the goal bigger than just building your mother a house. You come from a community where even when your mother went to work, the lady down the street took care of you. Why not build her a house too? What about the teacher at school that you talk so much about? She needs a house as well. And what about your Auntie Mabel? And what about the 10 other women in the community that you, you grew up when you, when you went to the farm with your father? Build all of them a house. Well, I don't have that much money. You see, that's the problem. The mindset. Put it on your goal sheet. Your goal is to build a hundred mothers, a hundred houses. Think big, the man, what is hard? You're not going to get sick to thinking. You're not going to get sick to think. So instead of building, and I mean it, really try to do it. Literally, that means you have to create. You have to create a path now to get there. Hmm? This is not wishful thinking, you know. When you are motivated and you're thinking big and you make up your mind, especially if you're sharing it with people, that you need to get to that destination, you're going to create a path to get to the destination. So if an individual wants to go to Ghana from Trinidad, they're going to go online and look for what airline is going from Trinidad uh, uh, and going to God. They're not going to go online and look for an airline and they don't know where they don't want to go. They want to go. They're not going to go to the airport and say, I want a ticket on the next plane coming in. I'm just going anywhere. They don't know where they're going. They don't know where the plane is going to land. They don't even know what plane is coming for them. People don't do that. Not unless they're running away from the law or something. People don't do that. You know where you want to go. I want to go to Ghana. I want to go to Zimbabwe. Let's go and see which plane going to Zimbabwe, which plane going to, to Ghana. So, so that's the way you're supposed to deal with your life. Most of us, again, we live life, reality. We don't know where we go. We're just going to jump on the bus and where we end up, we end up. That's why we like to say opportunity knocks and opportunity open doors and all of these things. Many of us, we don't go looking for the opportunity. We're waiting for it to come. So in the same way you can decide, I go into this place. You must decide in your life, I want to get to this place. So when you decide, I want to get to this place, you will be much more motivated because you know where you're going. Because if you're driving your car and you don't know where you're going, you're going to slow down. What we doing? Looking back. What's next? But if you know where you're going, especially if you're on time, you, you, you press down on the gas and you turn the corner, you reverse, because you know exactly where you're going. That's what motivation is all about. So you have to think big. So what's the trick now? All right. All right. All right. I'm not going to just build mommy a house. I'm going to build at least two houses. I said a hundred houses. Man, I can't build no hundreds. Of You're still giving up. <laughs> You're still giving up. You are, Listen, you don't understand what we're talking about here. We have this abundance. Nothing too hard to do. What, what is hard to do? Hmm? What is hard to do? Look at all these um, jet planes that we see fly above our head and all these uh, cruise liners that you see on the water. People own them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have plenty of money. You see, I'm telling you, you and, and that's the response you get when you engage in this sort of conversation. We have to break the shackles away from our minds. Go and build a hundred house. There are people building a hundred houses. There are people building a th thousands of houses. Find some way to do it. Now, let's be realistic. We're building 100 houses, 100 houses in 10 years. No, realistically, 10 years. From where we are now, 
struggling to build the one house. Let's put a realistic plan that we build in 100 house in 10 years. Now, we can do that faster than that, you know. But let's look at it on a realistic level now. So then now we plot and we plan and we see what we need and material and, and the economics. And obviously we may have to create a whole business to just reach to that degree that we build in these houses for these hundred mothers. Now at the end of 10 years, let's just assume you only build 50 of these houses. Let's say 40 or 30. So you reach only 30 of these houses. You would have achieved much more than you initially thought you would have achieved, even if it's 10 houses you end up building. Because that is what usually happens. You know. That is what's going to happen. If you have a goal and you look like you're going to achieve the goal when you just need to move the goalposts. They have a phrase in football, soccer, where they say, man, you're moving the goalpost. You move the goalpost when you're getting closer to the goal. Hey, he's motivated. Uh, uh, you, want it, you want to be it. You want to stay motivated. So now your target to build that hundred, um, those hundred houses for those hundred mothers. And we can't take 10 years. I don't know how I come to say 10 years. We have to do that in at least four years. At least four years, we build in those 100 houses. At least four years. So we need to put a four-year plan. You alone can't do that now. You alone can't do that. Now you need to form a committee. You see, you might have to start to work. You need to form a committee from the people in the community. and At least get five good soldiers that you grew up with and say, hey, listen, I have an idea that we need to build 100 houses for Aunt Mabel and Sarah and Jacqueline, whose, whose husband died 10 years ago, et cetera, et cetera. Remember these old ladies uh, who take care of us and you build a committee, you start to have um town hall meeting with the, with the village and then you, 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 you even start a business and start fundraising. You see how you do it? Because you put it to work in your mind. You had a vision. You had an idea. So instead of just wanting to build your mother a house, you had a bigger vision. A hundred houses in four years, maybe three. And you're going to do it. Don't bother with me saying even if you build 10, you are going to to build a hundred. But even if you build 10, <laughs> you would have done more than you would have thought. So again, the target. Now, the point I'm making with all of that is you need to aim higher. Than your target. Because if it's one thing that you're sure to get out of that project, you know, your mother will get a house. <laughs> you need to aim higher than the target. So then after understanding the goal and understanding the target, then you would have to uh, take massive action. Uh, when we say take massive action, I'm going to give thanks to those who may be just coming in. We are going to, um, let me just see a little time check here. When we say take yes, massive action here, and oh yes, give thanks to those who are just coming in. Please mute, mute your mic when you come in. Give thanks. Uh, and again, for those who are just coming in, you know, we would have begun at least, I think at least for an hour now, and we've been going into the whole aspect of understanding wealth and understanding the economy, understanding money, and then understanding the importance of investing in yourself and your, your mindset and put away the scarcity mindset and the, the average mindset. And again, as simple as it, it looks, it is, these, these things are very important for, for thriving, a uh, thriving business lifestyle. And when I say lifestyle, you are a business, you know. Remember, we ain't talking about capitalism here, here at all at all. 
<laughs> this is very important. That's why this message comes with this, this conscious undertone. But we, we will give one the chance to say a word as well before we seal. So please be patient. We want to make sure we get this message out at least as thorough as we can. Uh, so what I was saying as far as uh, taking take massive action in our family, we could just slow down just a bit. You see, this is a very universal, at least for the moment, very universal workshop. So it's not designed for entrepreneurs alone. It's not designed for upstart or startups. I keep saying upstarts. It's not designed for alone. It's not designed for, you know, it's designed for everyone. That's what it is. So there's just a universal thought pattern here. But of course, there are other avenues that we do provide or the courses that we will offer for those who are already on our email list. Remember, we also have the evolution uh, uh, course as well that, that is designed specifically even for those who have businesses uh, uh, and companies that want to bring their staff on board for the daily training that they would receive. It's just like a, a five to 12 minute training that you get every day, the evolution course that we provide that keeps you motivated, not no long two hour course. You know, it's, it's a course that lasts, well, we actually had it for over a month, but we went back to the drawing board again and decided that, hey, we're gonna put more value to this course. You understand that the price has not changed but we would have put more value to the course and we are still putting more value to the course so we could affect as much, you know, people's life as possible. You know, now that's just one of my, my purpose. Uh, um, that's another important aspect of this. Eh? You need to have a purpose. You need to know why you do what you do. Whatever you're into, you should, you should know. It's like a part of your mission statement. Why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. What's the purpose of me doing this? You know, even just for yourself, all of that helps you even in that whole aspect of, you know, staying motivated in what you do. I love to help people, whether you may not know me, eh, but I that's my joy. And, and I mean, anything that I see can assist me and help me. I love to share it. You know, that's why I share what I learn, share what I know, share what I experience, um, yeah, and I share because that's at least that's the heart I know I have, the, the one heart frequency of love for brother and sister. So again, so take ma massive action. What does that really mean? We live in an environment. I like to use the example of Marcus Messiah Garvey for this too. Where Marcus Messiah Garvey would have reached to millions of people internationally. And you know, if, for, for those who do not know who Marcus Messiah Garvey is, the, the African revolutionary born in Jamaica, uh, 1887, 1st of August, yet still African, you know, Marcus Messiah Garvey, uh, mighty prophet and, and the individual who would have really woken up the black man out of his sleep and slumber. So Marcus Messiah Garvey, the, the, we would have seen what he would have done industrially and and as a as a one man as such, and how many people he would have reached. Now, this is the thing. This is why promotion is key. Whatever product you have, you have a product, whatever it is. If I don't know the product, if the world doesn't know the product, people like to ask, so what's your market? To be honest, when I'm in consultation with others or maybe I'm, you know, applying for a service and this question comes up, sometimes they force me to maybe say a certain type of people, you know. Okay, for example, I have an I have an astronomy course. So you would think that my 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 the people that I'm so-called selling to are people that are interested in astronomy. My, my feel of uh, my my uh, 
what, what you call my audience or whatever it is, is the 8 billion people that are upon, upon planet Earth. That's who I'm selling to, the 8 billion people, those who just coming out of the womb too, by the time they catch understanding. In fact, I, I could talk to the parents to see if the parents could buy something for them. No, I'm serious. That's the mentality I have. My, my clientele is supposed to be the 8 billion people. When it hit 9 billion, I'll take them to people that are on planet Earth. And I'm serious about it. It's not that I'm not saying that to impress nobody. And that's it. No. I mean, <laughs> we don't know when that's going to happen. But at least, at least if I was to get 1% of that, just think about that. If that's my target and I get 1% of that who pay attention to what I'm saying, I would have a lot of things moving. So, so the point is that you need to get in front of as many people as you can. And don't think, oh, this group of people don't want what I have. No, I don't know what you have. But whatever it is I have, whether people are interested in astronomy or not, we have programs that get you interested in astronomy. We're not just going to those who are interested in it. Eh? We're the people that are not interested. Over there, we go to them, we get them interested in it, and then say, yeah, we have it here. This is the price. What do you say? That's how we do it. You have to reach out to the people. So I'm saying Marcus Messiah Garvey did not have a lot of what is available today. So I'm I'm using I'm utilizing an online um, platform here for the course, and at the same time, I am with my brothers and sisters live here over here on the Instagram. And more than likely, we will be putting maybe bits and pieces of some of this on the TikTok as well, um, YouTube as well. And, and again, this will be going through our international radio station, which is Radio Ando International. And of course, we are on LinkedIn as well. So, so the point I'm making now, it's almost like an octopus thing happening here, many different arms. And at the same time, even what is happening here is happening on different levels at the same time. And I could be assured that there are individuals even watching videos of myself, something that I would have uploaded last night or the night before. There are people listening to Radio Anu because this is not live on Radio Anu, listening to some other program that would be broadcast. So at the same, so you're in one place, but yet still you're in another place and another place and another place. Because I would do a video and I ask a question, can anybody tell me uh, uh, when Marcus Garvey was born? And someone answers. Now that's a, that's, a, that's a rerun of something that they're watching. I'm not asking that question. I'm giving a lecture at a school while that is playing and people are watching that. So I would have learned how to be omnipresent even in my promotion. Because that is what promotion is. You know? If people don't know who you are, you have to promote yourself. In the same way that you invest in yourself, you have to promote in your, you promote yourself. Pardon me. Even before, even before your product. Especially in the case of an individual like myself. So we utilize Twitter. We utilize TikTok. We utilize Instagram. We utilize Facebook. We utilize LinkedIn. We utilize YouTube. And here it is. This is where, this, make note of this, eh? If you're serious, you want to be a powerhouse. You want to be a powerhouse. You have to be consistent and you have to upload something on each of these platforms at least once. You can do that. You think about that. So hold on. Let's slow down here for a moment. Because what I'm saying here, I think is very important. And this is a solution for many of us. Let me go to my people here with me. Blessed love everyone in the chat here. I like ones to 
put in the chat what it is that you do. Anyone, what you do, what you sell. Anyone there selling, you know, anyone that, uh, because most of us, we are crafty people. And even if we have a job, I don't, I don't even want to know about your job right now. But those who are in the chat that have a product, you may sell mm, lemongrass soap that you make. You may sell idol food that you cook. You may have a restaurant. You know, I mean, there's so many people here, you know, don't, no one does anything. Anything you do, anything. When I say sell now, uh, I mean product or service, you know. Uh, natural soaps, you see, and that is coming from, um, uh, that's, that's key, natural soap. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. Good. Now, so if you're selling natural soaps, shampoos, whatever it may be, and you know, marketing is very important. Of course, most big companies, obviously, you have a budget um, in marketing. And even before, again, we see that we may get a, a few words from, from those who are here in the chat. You'll be able to come on and share a few words with us and maybe ask a question or give a comment because we're here to learn from each other as well, too. Eh? Um, seamstress, robes, clothing, uh, uh, cultural craft. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay, good. Very good. Whatever it is, even if it's a service, we are already motivated. This is why you have to stay motivated. This is why you have to wake up before the sun. You know? You can't be up too late night. I'm not a, I try my best, man. That's something I really try to do. I, tr I don't use the word try, but that's I try because sometimes it's just not getting the uh, <laughs> You want to rest <laughs> by 9 o'clock. We don't say sleep, we rest eh? by nine o'clock because you do need you do need a time to go into that zone at least from nine to four and you come up fresh a good six at least six five but the three hour and four because I have to get up at four you see that's the thing with me it's not a maybe I have to get up at four because birds there are no birds you know that you see in their nest sleeping. When the sun is coming up, not even the nocturnal birds sleep when the sun is coming up. They're all alert. All the bird has to be sick to die to be sleeping when the sun is coming up. <laughs> you understand? All the birds, you know, there are more birds on the planet than people. And none of them, none, can you imagine? But just give us a day off at all. We don't, we can't get out of the bed. So that, that's why I know. That it is a fact that human beings are away from their true nature, the way that the Most High intended them to live. So again, that's why when you get up, you have time to do these things. TikTok, in, in Instagram, you don't know it's just a post. It could be a two-minute video. You get it. But just, you got to be relentless. I mean, my different networks that I utilize, they're definitely nowhere close to where I really want them to be. But at the same time, it took a, it took a few several years to even get even my YouTube channel to be where it is. Many ones commend it tremendously. And I know it, it's doing its own thing. I know that. But because of my vision and my goal, I know where I want the whole media, stealth media, radio, and the website and everything where I want it to be. So I have to promote. I don't just use my medium to promote what I have. I promote in places that maybe some of uh, you as listeners here, uh, they, you know, you may not, you know, see the world. Different magazines, um, um, out, outside magazine, and astronomy magazine, and different tourism brochures and different tourism websites and because remember now the different products that I offer again which is important the, the amount of products that you have especially at a time when we are living in an age where a lot of things are done online once you are an online uh, entrepreneur or you have an online business and you're selling services online especially if there's services that you create it could be art whatever, well, then you need to step up on the inventory too. have many things to offer. 
you know so even if you have a customer you at least will have something else you can give them because there are people that you will attract that will buy anything that you have because they are so satisfied with your service so you don't want to run out with these people and say wow else to give them now no so you start to stock up on your inventory not your inventory of your soap you know but the different lines of soap that you create you understand i know sometimes maybe it may not be selling as fast as you want and mm, you have five brands or five different types you already think of the other five that you want to make but you know you're just not as motivated as you want to be because business is not as fast as it you'd like it to be don't make that kill you man go and work on the cinnamon soap go and work on the lemongrass and the rose soap go and work on them get them there because the market will come it will flood one day so so if if again you concentrate on the different avenues that you have to get your word out you know so so prepare your word properly as as you would see the different ads that we have again all of that is years of work in progress it's my children that do these works, but they didn't just jump out of the woodwork to do it. You know, I had to hold them psychologically from this wicked world to some degree, just to even understand how to, 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 to work in a family environment and a family structure to know that this is a family industry that we're building. So, so a lot of what you see our presentations, uh, our flyers, our videos, our full documentaries, uh, the young ones, the children, my young prince specifically as the videographic, videographer, VR, video, whatever it is that he does, man, <laughs> and the designer of the posters and these different things. So the point I'm making is now you utilize all of these different things and daily, daily and consistency is very important. Daily consistency is very important. So that means now people always see you. So the more subscribers that you're getting now, make sure that they, you don't know, um, uh, put on their, their notification bell. So every time you put up a post, every time you put up a video, they're there. Again, Facebook. Again, Instagram. Again, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube. Utilize them. They have other medium. is a magazine, an article, uh, well-read, well-subscribed to online article outlet that you could create a, a, an account and, and start to post those of you who like to, to write, those of you who are writing books, you could write excerpts or articles about your own book. That's another thing. If you're Even if you're writing a book, if you have books, even if you're writing a book, start to speak of the book before the book is done so people start to get accustomed to the book. You see how it is, my brothers and sisters. This is what motivation is all about. You don't want to give up. You understand? If you have something to sell, you can't be afraid. You have to pick up your phone. You have to get your um, um, uh, the list of people that you need to call. You definitely have to have a, a, a base, a base of individuals that you can attack first, whoever they may be. When I say attack, I don't mean that in, a, <laughs> in that way. You know, but, 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 you got to have the mentality eh, of a predator. Yeah. You're going after your goal. Mm -hmm. That is how you're going to achieve. It's all about the mindset. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying again now that let me just read some of the, 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 uh, the comments here if there are any before I go too far. So, so yes. So your the robes, your clothing, the soaps, you know, you could do a little tutorial and I guess how to, to, to utilize whatever products that you have. Uh, but again, you, you create a whole environment about around your product. It's not just about doing a poster and putting up a new poster every day. You, you have to think, you have to meditate. That's why you wake up early. That's why you give a moment to think. You know, I cannot think for everyone, but I know whatever I'm into, I mean, I'm going to try to make it the best, the best of what it can be. So even if it's just soaps I'm making them, let me just think about that. Obviously, we're going to be branching into, branching off into shampoos and conditioners and, and body, um, whatever you call that, bombs, bath bombs. I'm not sure if, if the families do, if K is doing that. Um, but... 
you know, at the same time, you may create a blog around it. You may create mm, this 10 minute talk around it. It may not, that may not have to be every day. It may be something you want to be extremely professionally done. Uh, could be once every two weeks. You post every day, you know, you post things every day. Don't get me wrong. Make something out, even if it's a picture, let people see you still showing what you're showing. But your soaps now, there, there must be something special about the soaps. Your soaps, let's say that they're all natural. I'm just saying they're all natural. And again, you have a specific blend. Maybe you would have done your research, which brings us back to what we were speaking of before. You have to invest in yourself. So if you're making soaps, you have to really understand the products, uh, um, the raw material that goes into the soap. Know it well. Understand the real property of cinnamon or writer man, as we say, guys, not sinning. Right, man. The real property property of the lemongrass and the rose petals and whatever else you put in to the soap, and and you start to create programs around it. It could be a talk show. Uh, again, you're not stressing yourself. You don't want to burn out, then. So this talk show may be once every two weeks, um, and you invite, let's just say, a doctor that would speak about the general hygiene. You begin there. Um, the next week you could invite maybe someone who has used your product as a testimony and you, you post these things up and create a whole program. That's just an idea that is coming to me as I'm asking for those who are producing other things. And, and it can go for other products. So I'm just trying to show us again, we have to be innovative, obviously. You have to have the motivational mindset. You have to wake up every day to be thinking like this. You just got us. You got to do it. We don't want to have no survival kind of reaction. No, you know, we're not here to survive. Like we're trying to survive. It's a survive thing and survive thing. No, but you want to be the apex of the game. You have to think like that. It's not capitalism we're on. I got to repeat that because it's very important. That's why the historical aspect um, to what I'm saying is very important. I'm somewhat speeding now because... The allotted time for this is soon there, but I'm definitely going to give enough time for all of us to, um, for those who may want to share a word. Now, obviously, again, as I said, your your goals keep you motivated. Uh, your goals keep you motivated. Oh, yes. The pen is mightier than the sword. Marcos Garvey. Uh, have a phrase we say, uh, but the oh, you know, the, the, the tongue is mightier than them both, <laughs> but the pen is mightier than the sword. Is a is, you know, it's an ancient term, and uh, it shows the power of writing. So When you, when you, when you rise in the morning again, it's good to have like a, a pad, a book, whatever the case is, I have different pads, legal pads, my tiger books, you know, my, my books, my books, tiger books, yeah. <laughs> But it's good to, you know, you're running an official business, whatever, you have your different legal pads and you keep yourself organized. Keep records. Understand exactly where your little business is going. Uh, but as an individual, get accustomed to writing your goals down every day. And uh, like, my books are just filled with that. I just... Write down every day, every every single day, every day, I would write the goals and the targets. And now this this is another level where you could uh 
the goals and the targets. Uh, you could write them in the affirmative. Let's, let me explain what I mean by that. Because you see the power of the, the thought. We, know we didn't really go into this today. We didn't go into this today, right? But the power of thought is deep. I'm sure many of you would have done the exercise with us, with at least on YouTube or wherever, where we make the hand grow. Um, if not, I'm sure most ones would have done it. If not, well, especially for those on Instagram. If not, I'm just going to do the exercise. Just so now, if you take your hands, family, where the risk or the risk meets the hand, right here, those on Instagram can see clearly, and those on, you see, where the risk meets the hand, you see that line there, where the risk meets the arm, I should say, where the risk, where the risk. <laughs> Where the arm meets the hand, what am I saying? Where the arm meets the hand, where the hand bends, there's this line between there, whatever it's biologically called. Good. Now you have it at the other hand as well. Now you align them, just align them properly, <laughs> and then clasp your hand. A simple thing, just align them and clasp your hand. Now, when you do that, you will notice that one of the hands is shorter than the other. In most cases, if they're the same, well, it's all right. You're going to take the shorter hand. If you did the same, take any hand. But you're going to take the shorter hand. Now, you're going to tell the hand to grow. You're going to hold it up. Put the hand, put the longer hand down. And keep the shorter hand up. And you're going to look at it. And you're going to feel it from your heart. And you're going to tell this hand to grow. Man, I like I feel mine growing already. And you're going to look at it and say, hand, grow. Now you have to say those who, you have to mute your mic, eh? I don't want to mute your mic very important. But now say to it now, grow. Say, hand, Grow and, and, and you know, say like how I'm saying it with feeling. Han, I say to grow. This is very important, Mr. Han. I want you to grow. I'm going to say it one more time, maybe two. Han, grow. Mr. Han, make sure, or Mrs. Han, or however the hand is, Empress Han, Han, grow. Very good. Make sure you put your feeling into it. All right. Now, I want you to do the same thing. Where the, uh, the, the line is between the hand and the arm, you align them both same way. And I want you to clasp them. And you would see that the shorter hand is now the longer hand. No. How on earth that happened there a little while? When that's your hand, you know, this is not like a machine you took and you pull it to see if your hand could grow. It was just your mind, your thoughts. The other exercises we could do, you know, all of those, I have some of those exercises in the evolution, in the evolution course, the evolution online course for those who do not know. Again, we have the evolution online course specifically. And, and and as as I said, these are you get a daily, a daily motivational five minutes to between five to twelve minutes, depending on the different chapters, several chapters. We are adding to it right now. So we're making it a grander course. The price hasn't changed, but we're making it a grander course. You know, so those of you who are in business, those of you who are starting a business, those of you who are thinking of doubling the income and all of these different things, you are going to receive again a, 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 a morning, daily morning strategy. So even like I speak about the morning meditation, you have the course where you can get a five minute or five to 12, some of the chapters, seven minutes long, but it's a daily pep. Every day you get a, a new vibes, a new pep, you know, a course that will last you at least three months, at least the way that we are building it up now. 
You understand? And we will be creating other programs that will be totally ongoing. So definitely, you don't even have to worry about that. But the point is now that the mind, the mind, the mind, as I said, there are other exercises we could do where, man, that would just blow your mind. That would like, you would say, no, 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 this is something else. Yeah, because it's the power of thought, you know? The power of thought. That is why I was saying from the beginning of the program, don't be afraid to think big. You're not going to get hurt. It's all right. Think big. Think big. Think of owning, think of owning a fleet of jet planes. Something wrong with that? I definitely, that's where my mind is. But you see, I, I have a purpose. I'm not just thinking mad like, yeah, we, have, we need a fleet of jet planes like it. No. I am thinking my goal, eh? For me to explain my goal, I would need an hour to explain that to you. Because my goal engulfs even you. That's my goal involves even you. I don't even have to know who's listening to me. I don't have to see you. But my goal involves you. So my goal is so big. My personal goal, what I would love to achieve, is so massive that if I was to achieve 0.5% of my goal. I'm telling you. <laughs> it, would, it might even appear as if I still achieve that goal. Because it's so big. It's an empire goal. It's a, it's a total <laughs> revolutionary goal. You understand. You know, it, it's, 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 it's a, a, a redemption goal. It's a liberation goal. It's, it's, that's, what, that's the goal. So... There's several targets now that I have to hit that goal. So to the pen now, again, so every day you write the goal. You see, as I just showed you the hand growing, that's it. You write the goal. So you can write the goal in, 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 in um, I will, I will, which is very good. I always think that's the best way to start. It's something that you need to get accustomed to. Do. So every day, you know, I will achieve. So let's just say you have a goal. Let's get to some numbers quickly now. Say you have a goal that you want to uh, uh, earn. Well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a figure here. I'm gonna give a figure. I'm gonna give a figure. Five thousand dollars a day. I will make. $5,000 today and every day. Now, why you add every day? Because you don't want to get stuck on a figure vibes. Figures, the figure thing and a number thing, no offense to nobody, that's a kind of level of poverty. When a person have a number in mind, it's not a nice feeling at all. I don't, I don't even like to hear it. I don't care how big the number is. You're supposed to think about cash flow. That is supposed to flow. Is a flow you're thinking of a flow, a flow, not a mom, like a number like yeah, yeah, a million. Even if it's a, a hundred million, yeah, a hundred million can work. We can do something with a hundred million because most people, you know, they're thinking of how much money can last them for the rest of their life. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. But I mean, that's what it is. No, no, you have, you see, that's why you have, you need to have a genuine purpose, Rasta. Oh my, give thanks. Yeah, you need to have a genuine purpose. You need to love people. You want to see people living in harmony to the point that if they can't even do it for themselves, it's all right. Just give me a, a while. I can do it for you. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to be thinking, you know. So that's why I'm saying no, no offense that I laugh. So, so, but you want to see a, a flow. So you want to see 5,000 every day. Now, I write something like that, you know, and it's not 5,000 I write. Eh? I used to write 5,000. Yeah, there was a time ago I would write, I will make $5,000 today and every day. So that means now, and, 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 just listen to me, good. Why every day too? Because, all right, you got to write down that 5,000. And, and you have to be clear, 5,000 United States dollars currency. All right, you write that down every day. You just write in that. Plus other things, eh? Make it a routine. You have to have certain other targets, at least five targets, and you just keep writing it every day. 
it becomes a part of your psyche. It becomes a part of your subconscious. It becomes a part of you. We just made our hands grow, eh? Just by saying it. It becomes a part of you. It gets into you. No, I'm not into the wishful thinking. Believe me. Believe me. If you don't know me, I'm not into no wishful thinking like you're just going to write it and it's going to happen. Impossible. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. But the fact that you write it, especially that you say every day, you're supposed to look at yourself now and say, is it possible? Think now. Is it possible for me to literally make $5,000 every day? Whatever it is that you're doing now, the job you may have, is it possible that I can do something on that job? I don't know what job it is. It could be possibly, you know, it could be. I don't know. And most jobs, that impossible. Straight up. On the job. But it's possible. Now, I can tell you for sure, for sure, again, the cash flow, that's why it's good to have different streams of income. And don't try, don't try to just rush to create different streams. You want genuine, authentic, um, you know, products and services that are of high standard. Just take that for me. So take your time. Don't rush nothing. Don't rush nothing. But you need different streams of the income. So you know I do international hikes uh, to Greencastle Hill. But within our, our company, Rastafari Experience Antigua, we still do island tour. We still have the cannabis tour. Uh, we still have online courses as well. And of course, you know, we have our solstice and our equinox specials that we do. Uh, that's just one company and a set of different products in, a, in that company. Within the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge, of course, you know, we have these workshops. This is a free workshop, but we do have the workshops. We have the courses, the evolution course. We do have the International Hope School, which is a course within itself. We do have the Ancient Astronomy, which is a course within itself, a literal online, online course within itself. We have an Archaeo Astronomy course where you literally visit us here in Antigua for nine days and nine nights. And we go to Greencastle Hill as well for three of those days and nights. And we do archaeological, literal, on the site, archaeological research with the stones and the stars. Um, of course, you know, we have our, 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 our garment shop with our jerseys, with our paraphernalia on it and, and these different things as a part of promotion as well. Of course, our books and our documentaries, the Tiger's Nest, the Tiger's Nest radio program, which is an, a, 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 a renewal subscription program as well, which is very important as far as the promotion as well. And then we we also have the, the natal chart reading. We literally read your, your the, the day that you're born and give you the whole shebang. You know what I'm talking about. And we do our online lectures, and I'm telling you, I can go on and on and on. You see what I'm saying? And all of you know that everything that I offer is quality. Not as if it's just something I put it together. You know that for sure. And it took years. It's not as if I just jumped up and did it. It took time, and I invested in myself. I left the job that I knew I didn't want to do. And it, it, it has been a journey, and it has been a while, and it took time. It really took time. You know, but you can start somewhere. You know, don't bring no snake oil to nobody. Eh? Make sure you bring a quality product. That, that's very important. Even if it's one product, bring a quality product, please. You know, but then start to expand. You know, start to build on it. Again, you need to invest in yourself. You understand? And, and, and then start to promote yourself, as I even taught you here today. Because if you, if no one knows who you are, they're not going to know how to even engage you. And then we can go into the whole aspect of your marketing and website and web page and web building and all of these different things. And we can go on and on and on. But, you know, I think I'm going to leave my presentation for here, here for now in the interest of time and in the interest of hearing what those who are with me would have to say. Yes, Holy Manuel I, Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. The people on Instagram, I'm going to bless you all for now. Love, 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 and I'm going to engage 
with the loved ones here at the Institute uh, course. Yes, blessed love to everyone. Give thanks. I'm going to stop the share. All of those who are with us, give thanks each and everyone. Once could unmute the mic and anything you want to share, anything you want to ask, anything, anything you want to comment, anyone. Um, if it gets too rowdy, we could raise hands, but I don't see no hands raised. So I see Adrian unmuted his mic. Ones could on their camera as well if they desire. And the floor is free. Instagram, my battery will die even if I was keeping you here. Still, it will still will go. <laughs> oh, so blessed love. Yes, brother, you could speak, brother Adrian, if you're going to speak. I see, and and brother and brother um. Mogingwa, that's it, right, my virgin? It's a T, please. Again, Prince. Family, you hearing me? Yes. Okay. And you weren't hearing me before? Yes, yes, we're now here. Yeah. Okay, well, family, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. It wasn't even on mute. Uh, yeah. That's how it was a confuser. Well, pardon me. Everything that's went black. Okay, I think it's that. All right. Well, I was asking if anyone, you know, had anything to share, question, comments, anything, anything at all for the remainder of the moment that we have. Thanks again for coming in. Eh? Thanks for sharing the moment with I and I. Give thanks for for even, you know, just just even considering to 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 register for this, to even listen to what I have to share. The, the, there's the fact that you consider it important and relevant, you know, that alone is half more. To everyone. Yes. Blessed. Blessed love to one and all. Yes, brother. Yes, sir. Yes. Blessed love to Rabbi Isaac. Yes, sir. And Blessed Mani. Human. And his two kids, his two, his two children, not kids, his two children. Human. You know, and it's all about building the kingdom of Negus. You know? Human. Yeah. And Negus is with us, living in living flesh, you know? Yeah. yeah, so we should all come together as one people, you know? And support him and support her. You know, and Rabbi Isaac, I want to thank you a lot for this medium and for all the mediums that you put out for the people. And it's up to us to share this to the world, to get the word out. You know, we have a responsibility as a people to get your word out, to create this whole, you know, everlasting kingdom. So thanks a lot everything that you've done bringing some out of the pit you know and thank you for sending us to bring the rest to you holy Emmanuel, i king celestia ija rastafari blessed love i appreciate love man i love this so much My love. yes hail yeah madingwa yeah, and then greetings, honorable priest. Mm -hmm. Greetings, mm -hmm. everyone in the chat. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, very perfect. 
Okay. Uh, well, I, I came in a little late because I had to update my my Zoom day. I will send um, the recording to you. Everyone will get the recording because yeah. um, it won't be necessarily going up on the internet like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, Priest. So, so as I come in, uh, something that had me That's thinking. True. You were you were talking about when you. I don't know if you're talking about when you started or how long you had big goals, you know. So something I thought about was whether whether you found anything of the things that you were doing, whether you found precedence for them, like uh, anything you found already running, you know. And and the other thing is, and and I did get that well. There's something in the background. I get what you're saying. I think you're talking of maybe when I was working at the airport. But you said something about president. Repeat that part. The, the last section. Yes, I'm asking whether any any of the things you're doing, you you kind of joined on to a, a, a something that was already happening around you or whether you had to be a pioneer, you know? Okay, okay. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> And the next question, yes, that's a good answer. Yes, and the other thing was just um this this multiple streams, you know. When you think of multiple streams, I'm listening to you, and I think all of the things that you are offering, the services, they're all under under the same roof, you know. So sometimes when you have a, a something like a business idea, you might. Think of that business, but then you have you have that culture, and you know, as as Rastas, we have we have things like guidance pins. You know, I always wanted to make guidance yeah. pins since I was a youth. You know, but you know, I have my 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 career as well and my business as well. So I'm just I'm just wondering how you can make it all all. All work together, if that's a good question to ask him. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad you asked. Let me do the second one first by asking you, what, what's the business again that you do? Uh, I do decorating interiors. Oh, yeah, that's you did the decor. Yes. And what business do you do, Adrian? I'm a, I'm a driver at um, an air conditioning company. Okay. A courier. Yeah. You want to know what you call... Your em your uh, your employee. Yeah. No, it's sure, sure. interesting. It's like the two of you have that that two levels. Believe me, the motivation works for both levels, but it's like two different uh, mentality. Because as as just I'll get into both um uh, both, both the, um your question, Bridget, but I just want to say something. Like yesterday, not yesterday. I mentioned it yesterday, but a few days ago, um, I was speaking to a brother of mine, a virgin of mine. I mentioned this on the program, the program last night. And he was saying that he was going to leave the job he's doing. Now, the job he's doing is not upset with it or anything. He 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 works at a store Thanks. called World. Um, someone just move me to me. Um I don't know which one of the ideas. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yes. So, uh, all right. Oh, it's not you. Um, I'm best. Assist me in the. Uh, yes, but, uh, we, we, we only have one host at a time. So, hey, let me. me um, assist you uh, by reclaiming. Uh, my position as host. Yeah, but I'll just what I'll do is I'll mute everyone. So for the, uh, the speaker. So I have your money right. <laughs> um. All right. Mm. Oh. That's yeah. Um. All right, so Brother Paul, you can resume. Um, I'll let you unmute your mic, then you can resume. We just want one participant um, yeah. to speak at a time. So what I was saying, you know, give thanks, honorable members. Yeah, so what I was saying, when I um, 
with 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 okay, I was saying both of you, first of all, let, let me just touch that. The different aspects. The Brendan, he was saying that he was leaving at his job, he works at a store where they sell signed clothes for men, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um it's 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 a store, it's his bread, it's his brethren store. And his brethren kind of, his brethren kind of assisted him in a time when he needed that help. And he doesn't mind it, but he he's a he's a conscious brother, you know, like I and I, and he he wants to kind of deal with agriculture on another level. Good. Now I'm into that. I I'm sure I just explained earlier that I was at a job that I was already looking to go deeper into it. But the moment they, they, they threatened my culture that I was just getting into, I just put that aside and went straight into the culture. So that's not a problem at all when he said, listen, he told me that. He said, priest, I don't soon leave here now. By next month, I'm done with this. And I'm going to start the farming, etc., etc." And I said, good. But I asked him, no, I asked him, are you sure? And this is you, Adrian. I was showing him, you sure you ready to leave this? So it may sound so strange to some people, like if I tell him, no, don't leave yet. I'm saying, you sure? Because thinking now, wisely, even as a business person, uh, not because you want to, you have a calling. You may have a calling, and where you're working ain't the calling, but that doesn't mean you're not supposed to be strategic in leaving the work and going to the calling. Because you can use that same work to strengthen the calling. So maybe Adrian don't no intend to drive the, that truck forever then. And he have the calling. But he know he can handle this for now. And whatever it is he bringing in, I don't know his lifestyle. But if he can discipline himself and he can put away 40% of that every annum, for two years, he can take that same 40%, even if it's 30%, and then invest that in his calling. Two years ain't going to take no time. I mean, it's long time they say the world going to come to an end. I mean, come on. So two years, let's give it two more years and see if it happens. Two more years. It'll go fast. 2024. That could just move fast. So if he's doing it now, he's done doing it. I'm not saying he don't have a saving. I don't know his business. I'm not asking him. He don't, have, he don't even have to tell me. But I'm using him as an example from anyone else that may be doing the job, whether they like it or not. Because as I said, the brother that I'm talking about, he's very comfortable there. It's his friend's place. He think he gets a nice little cheese, a nice little payment. He's not being oppressed. But that's just not his calling. He's ready to do something else. So I'm just asking him now. If there's something else that he's ready to do, has he already prepared, you know, the infrastructure that he needs? He don't want to leave that secure income and then venture into an investment and then it doesn't work out. That's what I was showing him. And he thought about it. He, he stopped for a while and said, hey, never really thought about that, you know, but uh, you're right, you're right. I think I'm ready though. He says still think he's ready to go, but now that I put it to him in that way, he will think about it a bit more. And I know I went the long way, but just to kind of draw, bring a kind of foundation to even get to your question, King. Um, the first question and the second question. Uh, 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 um, the 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 first question you were asking if I was like a, a pioneer. I get that. The second question, dealing with all the different streams of income and, and all this, and um, you're looking at yourself, the guidances and the decor. Okay, good. Now, that decor thing that you're doing, that's a deep vibe. That's a heavy energy just to be a part of. I see that picture behind you on the wall. That's something you created there with King Emmanuel. It looked like the a kind of mystic thing or... So he is generous. I don't know if that's what I'm seeing exactly. But you have something in the background there, like an upside down ank. I'm not sure from the distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of your work, artwork? Yes, my lord. Okay, right. And you design your whole house when I'm looking in the background there, everything. 
Oh no, this is my my parents' home. Okay, I am not sure. Just asking. All right, no, no, but but in uh, um interior designing and all of that vibration. That's a deep space to be in. Is a very yes. I would assume very relaxing, very um penetrating space. You know, it, it involves the mind work. It involves a lot of thinking. You know, it's definitely a craft, especially especially if it is something of your own. So to me. The guidance, the guidance, the guidance, preparing the guidance is because that's one of the things I did when I left that same job. One of the first things I did is start making guidances. I would make them from coconut shell. I would make them from uh, a, a material that you put on the cabinets. I would cut them out and just the full works. And that was even before I went to Bobo Shanti Hill and see how the professionals kind of did it the, the, the right way. No, I'm just saying all of that. If you notice, I said coconut shells. If you use bamboo, um, I used to buy tiles, like the tiles that you put in the kitchen. And I would um, put them in some sandwich bags and have the picture of the emperor on them. And then I'd stick a, like a string and you could hang them on the wall and they look very nice, extremely nice. And I would sell that for $30, you know. So I'm saying to me, what you're asking me is in the same area of what you're doing already. You don't sound like if this is something else. I mean, it's a different level, a different stream, but it's the exact same thing. Not just the culture, but the decor. Uh, uh, the, the, the guidance is, is a level of uh, decoration because you're de you're, you're, the decor is on you. And, and in fact, when I used to make all of these guidances, I would take days and make hundreds of guidances. So that alone was like a decoration for the for, for, for the little room that I would have had at the time. You know, so to me, it's in the mm -hmm. cycle. Um, with the the aspect of being the pioneer, it's interesting you ask it like that, you know. Let me put it this way. Um, at that time, uh, Hold on, did I? My, my phone is ringing there. At that time, I would have had many... How would I put it? When I, would, when I left that job, I definitely did not have the mindset I have right now. That's for sure. No, that's something that you have to really grow into. But you grow into it because you had a spark. And you know something wasn't right, already conscious and everything at that job. Well, I was already, already Rastafari, already accepted the king, Haile Selassie the first. Um, at that time, I went straight into. I took the money and I, I had to buy a car with the same money that I got from whatever they owed me. And uh, yeah, went to live in the hills. At that time, I opened an idol shop, started to make those guidances. Okay, good. I'm glad you brought me there. So what it is with me now, when I used to work on the radio station in the early days, you understand, I wasn't paid to work on the radio station. And then after a while, they 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 were the one that threw me in the fire and came and said, well, brother, the time that you're taking up, you're going to have to start to pay for the time. That was the best thing they could have ever done to me. eh? Because what that did to me now, I had to go out and look for sponsorship, you know, but but I don't know, one would just go and look for someone to sponsor their program. I created a whole, no one taught me that, honestly. When I look into it now, you ask me that. No one explained that to me. I went and created a whole sort of industry wherein I didn't get a sponsor to pay for the program. I created a sponsor. Uh, well, they didn't become sponsored anymore. They were my clientele. And I created my whole style of creating ads and all of that. And my program would have had uh, more so-called sponsors than any other sponsored program. There were people used to wonder how I get all of these so-called sponsors. And I would be paying the radio station the same money, you know, that they're asking for, for the time, you know. It's not their business because the sponsors were mine. I didn't send them to the radio station. The people paid me and I came and paid the radio station. They, they couldn't ask me no question because I bought the time. And believe it, that is where that sort of mentality, you know, that I have really kind of took off. 
And yeah, you still see it today where the, the, the craft that the Most High has given I, you know, as, as I always say, the talent, the talent is supposed to take a talent and make talent. And you can say that that's my mantra. Family, I have to leave it here with this one. Um, I want to give thanks to everyone who came in. Give thanks for all those who showed the love to be a part of this presentation here today. I appreciate it. And it's touching for those who are on Instagram. And just continue to stay close. Of course, our website, priestisaacinstitute.com. Many great things to come. Blessed love, Honorable Empress. Please, since you are the host, take us out. Royal family, blessed love. All right. Holy Emmanuel, I, Selassie, I, Rastafari. Blessed love.